They say the wheels of justice turn slowly. All right. In this case, almost 10 years. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Stephen Everett now presiding. In many murder trials, there's the deceased and the defendant. State calls But this one is unusual because this is a story about a family. Please say and spell your name. Wendy Edelson, W-E-N. One that seemingly has everything. Devotion, wealth, influence, and something else. Back in 2014, the Adelson family had a big problem. And that so-called problem leads this family here. From the very outset, the state suspected the Adelsons, the family. While the defendant's choices helped solve a problem within his family, they came at a very high price. That price, prosecutors say, was murder. In the Bible, it says there's Exodus, the Jews left Egypt. And I, I always say the second Exodus of the Jews was from New York to South Florida. Michael Weinstein is a criminal defense attorney who grew up in South Florida. My parents came down back in the 70s, and it was 30 degrees in New York and 70 degrees here, and that was a pretty easy decision for them. They settled in Coral Springs, a community about an hour north of Miami Beach. Coral Springs is kind of like a suburb of nowhere, but there wasn't really a big city that it was attached to. Among the Weinstein families, many friends were the Adelsons. Here's the matriarch, Donna Adelson, appearing on Wheel of Fortune in 1989. Um, I'm a domestic coordinator. Uh, I'm responsible for the activities, classes, and lessons of my son, Robert, who is 16, Charlie, who is 12, Wendy, who is 10, my husband, Harvey, who's in the audience. Harvey Adelson is someone I've known my entire life. He's a dentist, and he was married to Donna. I only had three kids, Robert, Charlie, and Wendy. Harvey was extremely successful dentist. He runs at the Adelson Institute of Dentistry. Donna helped as the office manager. Donna was always a bright smile. You know, you'd walk into the dental office and she was always warm. You know, walking to her home, it was always clean, immaculate. And the kids were always well behaved and appropriate and dressed well. And she was always a bright light to those children. By all accounts, the Adelson children are exceptional. They're smart, athletic, and driven to succeed. The three Adelson siblings, Rob was the oldest. Rob goes to medical school and falls in love with a fellow student there. Donna doesn't approve of him marrying her because she didn't have a Jewish background. Rob marries his girlfriend, falls out of favor with his mother, and becomes estranged from the Adelsons. So, focus shifts to the younger children, Charlie and Wendy. And they will be central to the story. They were closer in age, so I think Charlie and Wendy were a unit to a certain extent. Charlie and Wendy were at high school at the same time. Charlie was class of 95, Wendy was class of 97, so two years apart. Daryl Gold went to high school with the Adelson siblings. Charlie was always kind of a goofy kid in high school. He was a jokester, and he was, a, I guess, a social butterfly. Charlie went to dental school, got his degree, came back, and then he was helping Harvey in his practice. So it was a father and son practice, and Harvey was successful, but the Charlie helped bring it to a new level. Wendy was always an all-star. She was incredibly bright as a child. She did phenomenally well in high school, incredibly smart and gregarious and well-loved by everybody. Friends say she isn't only smart, but also a lot of fun, characteristics that were on display when she, like her mother before her, appeared on a game show. What have you always wanted to do? Weakest Link. When I was little, I wanted to be a giraffe. <laughs> Wendy Adelson does something a little different than everyone in her family. She goes into law. Wendy has an internship in Washington, D.C., where another young lawyer is just starting out. Danny studied in Harvard undergrad. He went to Cambridge, England. He went to Israel for a year. 
And after that, he finished law school and we went to live in Washington. Danny was a very warm person to start with, with everybody. He never greeted people with a handshake. It was always a hug. Dan was raised in a conservative Jewish household in Toronto, Canada. So word in Yiddish, he would be a mensch, a real guy with great character and great personality. A young woman uh, named Wendy Adelson uh, searched him on J-Date, the Jewish dating service, and she was sitting with her mother Donna searching for a candidate for her to meet. And so they're looking up Dan Markell. He and Wendy share a passion for the law and seem like a great match. There was a really strong connection and she, you know, was really drawn to him. And what did you think of this young woman? She was a very warm, she's a very attractive person. And we were so pleased that, you know, Danny was happy. Wendy's beautiful, she's adorable, she's uh, bright. And it was a beautiful thing to see Danny in love. You must have been elated. Here is this beautiful, well-educated, bright, warm woman who comes from a great family, who is in love with your son. They're going to make great grandbabies. Everybody should be happy. We were. Wendy and Dan's relationship moves quickly, and in less than a year, they're engaged. They decide to have their wedding in South Florida. Donna Adelson was very involved in the planning of this extravaganza for her only daughter. Daniel Markell was devout in his Jewish faith. It was important for him to have a traditional Jewish marriage, specifically in that the wedding be entirely kosher. He was very invested in it being a kosher wedding so that the rabbis would be comfortable being there. When Dan's family and friends travel down from Canada for the big day, they're in for a surprise. Daniel Markell shows up at his own wedding and discovers that the catering is not kosher. I think he sort of had the rug pulled out from under him because the rabbis were going to have to leave, and I think that was a very devastating moment for him. Donna approached me and she said, why is Danny so kosher? You're not even that kosher. And she already had started to move towards that as kind of a bit of a divisive issue. Do you think that this is malicious? No, I think that it was a bit of sabotage, a little bit of lack of respect. There was a third person in this relationship, and that's what we have here. So Donna was the third person in the relationship between Wendy and Danny. Absolutely. Lots of people whose in-laws are paying for the wedding end up with not the wedding of their dream. It's only in retrospect that it looks like a harbinger of things to come.